Rangi misena la kachiberu. Lerim kachizum china chamaturu. Tiseda tigo mitsanzara i. Tiseda tisuni denlu. Rangi lava chuse kolore gopi kanewa kelche. Di beule pise lebeka zonam ja chichi. Zamling yaka blesheti na tarsab joi mi. Titan semi chuse kolotsu. Du yaka nale nandin bedi ebi. Dissuji Gonse, Nildam Jibanga to the Gosuki, don't touch his singer Simje Panabe Yable, Rana Sose Omba Batindi, Jicho Chobe Yisuni Jiba Chambachin, Timbu Tomdi Bulu, Chuseko Locas and Letandi, Dumda Chitomdi de Kosas of Hon Chambachin, Lamgita Lukalwang Dinchim Yotolo Yisuni. Why, I name a show, show, I name a show. And welcome to another episode of season three of Do You Know Your Child? I'm Choni, your host. When a loved one dies, it can be difficult to know how to help kids cope with the loss, particularly as you work through your own grief. How much kids can understand about death depends largely on their age, life experiences and personality. But there are a few important points to remember in all cases. Be honest with kids and encourage questions. This can be hard because you may not have all of the answers. But it's important to create an atmosphere of comfort and openness and send the message that there's no one right way or wrong way to feel. You might also share any spiritual beliefs you have about death. Let's see how our last week's participants are doing. Once upon a time, there were two little imps called Bubble and Squeak. As committed last week, we have started reading together. And the book that we have started reading is The Enchanted Billows. Usually Bubble wouldn't do them. Then one day, Squeak had a very strange idea. Last time when I came to this show, I promised my father that I will eat my uh, food on time and I will enjoy my food. It's so delicious. It is prepared by my mom. The funky father is the donkey. What color do you want to just? <laughs> Until kids are about five or six years old, their view of the world is very literal. So explain the death in basic and concrete terms. If the loved one was ill or elderly, for example, you might explain that the person's body wasn't working anymore and the doctors couldn't fix it. If someone dies suddenly, like in an accident, you might explain what happened, that because of this very sad event, the person's body stopped working. You may have to explain that dying or dead means that the body stopped working. Kids this young often have a hard time understanding that all people and living things eventually die and that it is final and they won't come back. So even after they've explained this, kids may continue to ask where the loved one is or when the person is returning. As frustrating as this can be, continue to calmly reiterate that the person has died and can't come back. Let's see who we have today. Hi, my name is Wanchilima. I am 10 years old. This is my little brother, Hunang Dorji. He is 6 years old. I am very excited to come on the show with my mother. Welcome to Do You Know Your Child. Um, do you know your child? Uh, maybe, may not be. Okay, I'm not very right. really sure. You're here to find out, I guess. Yeah. Then. All right. Um, at the end of the show, I think we'll know the result. Okay, yes, that's true. But at the end of the result, whatever, whatever score you get should only motivate you yeah. and never demotivate you to uh, and what make you worry that, oh, maybe I'm a terrible mother because we have all different styles of parenting. Yeah. So um, I'm sure what uh, the style that you have works for your family. So that's completely fine. Yeah. Introduce yourself and tell me a little something about your family. 
Uh, I'm Kezang Wong Mo. I'm a teacher in Gangwon Primary School. Okay. Uh, I have two sons. Okay. Uh, they are 10 and 6. Okay. The eldest one is studying in class 4 and uh, younger son is in class PP. Okay. So uh, uh, my village is uh, Mertam. It's just about 4 kilometers from Gangwon Primary School. Oh, okay, so you're pretty close to your village. Yeah, I am. Do you visit there often? Yes, I do. Do you take your sons with you? Yeah. Okay, great. Do they but like But the problem that? is we need to walk oh. through the road. But I <laughs> actually feel walk. like a village or a ne, a pilgrim site. Um, pilgrim, yeah. I like, I like the fact that uh, when you have to walk, I feel like, oh, yes. you're working so hard to get yes, there. Yes, yes. Uh, do your boys enjoy that? Yeah, they do. Okay, that's good. That's yes. good. What about the father? Of the boys, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, he expired. Okay. Uh, in uh, 2011. What was the cause of? Uh, he had jaundice. Oh, he really? died from jaundice. I never thought of jaundice as a, a serious. Uh, I mean, it could that it could end someone's life, but um, this is the first time I'm hearing. I'm really sorry, but um, how have you dealt with it? Uh, it must have been really hard in the yeah, beginning. Yeah, it was very hard actually. Yeah. Because I never expected uh, such thing would happen. Mm -hmm. But it's part of life. Mm -hmm. I took this positively and then I tried to tried to live on my own, mm -hmm. looking after the kids. I, I had to stand on my own feet. Yeah. But in a way, I was already uh, ready. Okay. Because uh, when he was uh, there, it was like uh, living alone, uh, raising mm -hmm. the kid alone. Mm -hmm. uh, because... Uh, he had different tests and I had different tests. Oh. He liked uh, seeing outside more. Okay. So in a way, uh, all the things starting uh, from the birth and raising up the kid, looking after the house, uh, old work, uh, managing things, I did on my own. Okay. So it was not very difficult. It but wasn't... it's sad that I lost him. Yeah, of course. It's, I'm sad for my kids. Yeah. How did, you, how did you break the news to your kids? How did you explain um, to your kids? Your kids one kid must have been really young. Yeah. yeah, your youngest was how old when? He was two years. So I don't think. Did you try and explain it no, to no, him? No, 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 no. What, how did you? But uh, my uh, elder son, yeah. he saw the scene. Okay. But I think uh, he was not aware okay. of uh, his father's death. Maybe he learned slowly. Okay. Later. Does he ever put you in a difficult situation and ask um, now where his where his father is or? No, no, he never does that. Because is he, he aware? No, he accepts the fact that his father has already left us. How do the kids take it? Is I, I, I'm so sorry. I'm going. I'm going to ask no, you okay. in detail because we on this show we've never talked yeah. about um, certain things, and this is the first time we're openly talking about yeah. it. Are the kids okay not having a father figure? No, at no, home? they are totally okay. Okay. Yes. And how do you think? Have you helped in them coping up with the situation? I think it went naturally. I see, okay. Because uh, from the birth only, I was uh, attached to them, mm -hmm. uh, whereas his father was a little uh, away from the family. Okay. In a sense, uh, he was not uh, attached. Okay, uh, all right. He didn't really care about them. Maybe mm -hmm. he loved from, the, uh, from inside, but he never showed his love. Through action? Yeah, through or action. Words. So in a way, they were brought up like that. I see. So they're used to it. One last question before we move on to the uh, with the questions. Who else is at home? Is there like a, is there your father or anyone else at home? No, I have my figure. grandparents uh, in Kangma. Okay, but right. we are living separately. So it's just you and the two boys at yeah. home. Normally they say it's important to have a father figure at home. Yeah, it is true. But maybe because you've taken the role of the father, father since mother. they were babies, yeah. do you think that helped? Yeah. Is it difficult being the only mother? I mean, being a single parent? Yes, yeah, sometimes it is very challenging. Yeah. But so I think uh, since childhood, I have learned to live independently. Okay. Because I come from a broken family. Mm -hmm. I and my sisters were raised up by my grandparents. We did not live with our parents. Okay, all right. So I come from a broken family too. By the way, thank you so much for coming up um, here and um, having an open discussion with me over this topic because it's one of those sensitive issues where yeah. people either don't want to talk about it or they just and divorce is another case where people really don't want to have any discussion of the sort but the reality is it happens yeah. it happens every day and uh, for um, shows like do you know your child and such topic important topics related to kids like divorce and death 
we realized we had to talk about it, so which is why I'm glad you were oh, cooperative. Let me explain to you the rules of the show. I have 10 questions with me. I'm going to ask these questions to you first, and then I'll ask these questions to your uh, son later. And later we'll tally the answers, and that'll be your score. Okay, Kayla. Yes. Question number one, how many languages can your son speak? Uh, he can speak uh, English, mm -hmm. then Hindi, a little bit of Nepali, mm -hmm. Sharchop, and Zonka. Zonka, five. So he can speak about five languages. Wow. Okay, great. Number two, what is his favorite food? What does he like to eat? He likes uh, emadachi. Really? <laughs> yeah. And he's 10 years old? 10 years old. Wow, okay, all right. <laughs> Number three, who is his favorite person in the world right now? Right now, I think uh, it's his mom. Okay, you, okay, yeah. all right. Number four, does he have a favorite actor? No, I don't think. No, does no. he like Bhutanese films? He watches. And, but no favorite but, uh, actor? he's not a uh, very fond. Number five, what is his favorite subject at school? It's mathematics. Really? Yes. Okay, good. And he likes English too. Okay, math and English. Six, how many hours does he study in a day? Apart from school, I think uh, he just does his homework. So maybe about an hour. An hour, okay. Yeah. Number seven, what is his favorite color? His favorite color is blue. Okay. Number eight, does he like to read? Yes. He does likes. he read uh, uh, library books, leisurely books? Yeah, Yeah, he, he does. Okay. Do you ever help him read? Uh, he, if he asks, then. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't disturb him. Can he read by himself? Yeah. Okay. Number nine, do you think your son will know where the fourth king was born? Yes. Okay. He Last question for you. Do you think your son would know when the fourth king was crowned as the fourth king? Uh, yes. Yes? All right. Well, you've answered all the 10 questions. Now it's your son's turn. Welcome to Do You Know Your Child. Before we start, please introduce yourself. I'm Wang Chunima from class 4A. I am 10 years old. Mm -hmm. I study in Kang Primary School. So Wang Chen, who gave you that name? Guru Muji. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah. Guru Muji gave your name, Inna. So you no, it's okay. You think it's Guru Muji he gave you the name? That's completely fine. But you know what? Your mom might know the actual name of the Buddha that you're talking about, or <laughs> someone, um, someone really your mom, someone who uh, your mom admires might have given you that name. But it's a very Buddhist name. You think it's a um, religious name. So that's good. Wang Chen. What does Wang Chen mean? Would you know? I don't know. Okay, it's okay. You can ask your mom. Or if your mom doesn't know, you can ask your Zong Okay? And okay. he would know. All right? Okay, Wang Chen. I've asked your um, mama 10 questions about you. I'm going to ask these questions to you. Are you okay? Okay. All right. Question number one. How many languages can you speak? We can count together. Hindi. Okay. English. Okay. Zonka. Mm. Shasho. Mm. Four. Okay, great. Hindi, English, Zonka, Shasho. Four. Okay. I want you to translate this in Hindi. Do you know your child in Hindi? Excellent. Okay. If I if we do this show in Hindi, I'm gonna have you be my co-host. Okay? Can you do that? I think it will be okay. perfect, right? I don't know. All right, Wang Chen. Then you speak four languages. Keep that up. Question number two: What is your favorite food? Chili. Number three: Who is your favorite person in the world right now? My favorite person in the world is my mother. Beautiful. Why so? Because she always takes care of me. Take care Excellent. of me. Okay. Four. Who is your favorite? Do you have a favorite actor? Nope. Why? All is my favorite actor. I don't choose any favorite actor from movies. Okay. All right. So you don't want to choose. You think everybody's excellent. Yes, okay. Sir. Number five. 
What is your favorite subject in school? My favorite subject in school is maths. Why do you like math? Nobody likes math. Why do you like math? Because I learn, I learn numbers. You like numbers? With me, I get confused with numbers. I'm so terrible. I'm going to take tuition from you, okay? Can you help me with numbers? Maybe. Maybe. Sometime. Okay, sometime if you're free. Right? Yes. Okay. Next question. How many hours do you study in a day? Be very honest. One. One hour, okay? Question number seven. What is your favorite color? My favorite color is blue. Okay. And why is blue your favorite color? Because it is the color of nature. Question number eight. Do you like to read? Yeah, yeah I like to read. Okay. What was the name of the last book you have read? Tashi and the Stolen Bus. So, why do you like to read? I like to read because it will improve my speaking language in English. Okay, or great. Zonka. Yes, perfect. Number nine. Where was our fourth king born? Our fourth king was born in Thimpu. I like how you're thinking. Yes, in Thimpu. But do you know the name of the place he was born in, Dimple? I think I don't know. Okay, fine. You're very honest. Last question. When was the fourth king crowned as the fourth king? When he was 17 or 19 years old. I want you to pick one age. 19, no, no, 17. I really like how you think because I wanted a date. But you give me the age and I'm going to accept it because that is that can also be the answer. For the answer, yes, he was crowned as the fourth king when he was 17 years old. And he was crowned um, as the king on 2nd of June, okay? So I actually wanted, to, wanted the date, but the question was quite vague. So uh, you give me the age, I'm accepting that, okay? Number nine, uh, nine was where he was born um, in the Chincholing Palace. Okay, in Thimpu. Okay. Have you been to Thimpu? Yes, I have been in Thimpu. Okay, great. Um, so, th have you been to Dishincholing? Nope. Okay, Dishincholing is quite uh, far from Thimpu, so maybe because of that you didn't know. So, but he was born in Dishincholing, okay? On 11th November. All right? All right. Okay. You've answered all the 10 questions. Now, let's take a look at your mom's score. Question number one, how many languages can your son speak? He can speak about five. Hindi. Okay. English. Okay. Zonka. Mm. Shasha. Mm. Four. What is his favorite food? He likes uh, Yamadachi. Chindi. Who is his favorite person in the world right now? It's his mom. My favorite person in the world is my mother. Does he have a favorite actor? No, I don't think. No. Nope. What is his favorite subject at school? It's mathematics. My favorite subject in school is math. How many hours does he study in a day? About an hour. One. What is his favorite color? It's blue. Blue. Does he like to read? Yes. I like to read. Do you think your son will know where the fourth king was born? Yes. I think I don't know. Do you think your son would know when the fourth king was crowned as the fourth king? Uh, yes. When he was 17 years old. Okay, I have your mama score with me. Um, let's take a look at, uh, I want, because you're good in math, let's Start with 10. As soon as I say, okay, cut one point, you're going to minus it, okay? I'm going to test how good you are in math. Okay, start with 10. Your mom wasn't able to answer the first uh, question correctly. I asked how many languages you can speak, and your mom said five. You give me four. What do you think can you speak that you forgot and your mom remembered? Mm. What language is... Nepali. Yes, Nepali. Can you speak Nepali? I could, but I don't know how to speak now. Oh, okay. 
So you have forgotten. So your mom seems to know you better than you know yourself. Okay? You've forgotten it, Pali. Your mom remembered it. Because this is, do you know your child? I'm asking. I'm, I'm really putting your a mom on the spot and asking her questions. And she seemed to really know you more than you know yourself, apparently. So I'm gonna give your mom a point. Okay? One point there. So we have. We still have 10. I didn't cut off any points. You still have 10, right, in your head? Yes. The other one was, if you would know where the fourth king was born, and you didn't know, right? But your mom thought you would know. And uh, so the answers didn't match. And I couldn't get a, give you guys a point for that. So cut one point out of 10. How many do we have? Nine. So nine is the score your mom got. <laughs> Is that a good score? Yep. Are you happy? Yep. All right. So now that we've, uh, we have the score, let's go with the commitment. Uh, I want to give more time to my kids. Okay. Does that not happen right it, now? It uh, does not happen sometimes. Okay. You have your own obligations. I see. Like, uh, you need to go out with stuff to yeah, attend yeah. gym draws and other activities. So in that case, I'm not able to reach home on time and give uh, them guidance. Yeah, okay. So maybe you, if you make a strict schedule of, okay, yeah. this time is going to be my family time and like make sure you don't make any plans then, then maybe that'll help. Yes. Okay. For you, Wang Chen, I have here, your mom gave me three commitments, okay, for you. I'm going to mix them well. I'm going to have you pick one. All right. I want you to be active. Okay. You talk very active. I like how you are very responsive. I like how you're very animated when you talk, okay? Maybe your mom wants you to be physically active. You said you like to... What's your favorite uh, hobby again? What was the other activity, sport, football? football? When you play football, you know how you have to be very physical, right? So even at home, not just when you play football, but even at home when you're cleaning up, when you're helping with your mom, when you're cleaning up the kitchen or your bedroom, you have to be active, okay? All right? Okay. It's very healthy for your body and your mind. Okay. With love, we'll have your letter first. Lah. So we'll go to that segment. Uh, dear Arta, if I had the power to make myself the perfect mom, I would. If I had the capabilities to give all the happiness that you desire, I would. But somewhere there are empty spaces that I'm not able to fill in. At times when soft words don't work, I am forced to use harsh words. It breaks my heart to see big tears roll down your cheeks. It hurts me when I'm not able to fulfill your demands. My heart bleeds when I fail to give time. These are my failures. I have failed, I fail and I will fail because I am not perfect. But I hope you will understand, forgive and learn to fill in the gap for yourself and your dear Kota. My love and care for you will never die. I will always be there for you. You and Kota are my heart, my reason for living. I am a proud and a happy mother. But sometimes you break me down, especially when you don't pay heed to what I say. Lastly, I want you to hold your Kota's hand and lead him to the right path along with me. I want you to set examples to your Kota and friends. Learn and be a good human. That's my dream. Be happy with what you have. Now, please, your turn. Dear Mom, I love you more than anything in this world. May you live happily and long. You help me in everything and I will never go against you. I will always do my best, I promise. You always take my side. Thank you for that. I will always listen to you. Can you forgive me for going against you? I understood that I can't always do what I want. Once again, thank you for everything. How was your mama's letter? Very nice. There you go, okay. What do you want to be when you grow up, by the way? I want to be an artist. What kind of artist? Like every kind of artist. 
There's the painter artist, there's the sculptor artist, there's the musician artist, there's the singer artist. I want to be lots of the artists. Okay, all right. You know what? Painting, creating, okay. singing. Wow, great. You want to be all sorts of artists. Okay, that's completely fine and you can do that, okay? So, okay. never give up on that dream. Okay, uh, Wang Chun, we have come to the end of uh, today's um, episode. But I want you to leave with a couple of books. Um, this book by Lexin. She wrote this book while she was in class 9. So I want you to use her as an inspiration to pursue all your dreams and your hobbies too, fun hobbies, while you're still young, okay? So don't wait for yourself to get old. The other book that I have is a collection of short stories by Lingi Jamso, so it'll be a nice read for you and your family. Some books from the Ministry of Education and UNICEF. And the final book that I want to talk to you about is His Majesty Jigmi Singye Wangchuk, The King Who Gave Everything. It was written by a guy named Sangye Tenzin. It's an autographed copy just for you, all the way from Thimpo, okay? You can read with Mama, okay? Sometimes okay. have Mom read for you. Top? Okay. Now with this, I, have, I think I have all the gifts here. What do you think is missing? There's another gift that's a very popular gift for, do you, from Do You Know Your Child. What is that gift? What is the most popular gift that I give you normally? I present to you. Titan watch. Yes, the Titan watch. You forgot about <laughs> it. Okay, so this is from Titan, our very, very loyal sponsor. Okay, and this is all the way from Thimpu. And with this, I have your mama's letter. Have you ever written to your son before? No, no, I haven't. So this is... First letter. Yeah, the first letter. You're going to preserve this, okay? Maybe frame it. Put it in a picture frame, okay? So this, this and this. A lot of author and Kushu Enterprise the, for, for Titan, just for you, okay? So, there you go. All right. <laughs> now that we've come to the show, uh, end of the show, I want to thank you, especially. It's a pleasure. Uh, and you for coming to the show. And uh, I think you have a very, very um, strong and beautiful mom. You need to respect that and um, love her for that, okay? okay? Do you know that? Do you know that you have a really strong mama? I didn't notice before. Okay, you didn't <laughs> notice, now you know. I just met her and I can, I can feel the strength that she, as a woman, have in her, okay? She's a really strong person, which is really good, because you and your brother need that. Me? So, I hope the very best for you and your family, and with lots of love from Dimpo, thank you very much. <laughs> Kids from the ages of 6 to 10 start to grasp the finality of death even if they don't understand that it will happen to every living thing one day. A 9-year-old might think, for example, that by behaving or making a wish, grandma won't die. Often, kids this age personify death and think of it as the boogeyman or a ghost or a skeleton. They deal best with death when given accurate, simple, clear and honest explanations about what happened. As kids mature into teens, they start to understand that every human being eventually dies, regardless of grades, behaviors, wishes or anything they try to do. And if you need help, many resources from the books to counselors can provide guidance. Your efforts will go a long way in helping your child get through this difficult time and through the inevitable losses and tough times that come later in life. On that note, we have come to the end of today's episode. We'll catch up with you next week, same time and place. Till then, if you have any suggestions or feedback, please email us at parenting at bbs.bt or write to us on our Facebook page. Thank you and bye bye. Your mom said you January, February, uh, January, February, March. Very nice.